Hello, my fellow Hollowed Hunters. This is the Souls Fanatic, and today I will show you how to make the Estes Flask from Dark Souls. Warning! This build uses a lot of epoxy resin and silicone, both of which release toxic fumes that are detrimental to your health. Please follow the proper safety procedures recommended for your specific product. You must perform all casting in a room with good ventilation, you must wear a fume repellent safety mask, and you must wear gloves. Again, these resins are toxic. Do not proceed with this project unless you are properly prepared. Also, this build is very expensive, and while it's not too hard to make, it is very easy to screw up. I myself made five mistakes, so uh, please keep in mind your budget. You could be looking at $100 in materials when there is a high chance the project will fail. Now that that's out of the way, a list of materials is provided in the video's description below, and I will be using YouTube's new video chapter system so you can skip to each step on the video's timeline. A link to my Patreon is down in the video's description below, where you can get access to any of the templates seen in my videos. But without further ado, let's get started. For our first step, we will be sculpting the inner mold. You will need four copies of the Estes Flask template, a thin square sheet of wood, a bottle of craft glue, lightweight spackle, a rectangular block of foam, a wooden dowel rod, a sharpie pen, a box knife, and a drill bit with the same diameter as the dowel rod. You may also need a right angled ruler and a straight edge ruler. And finally, you will also need a drill. We will start by marking the center of our wooden square. You can find the center by connecting the opposite corners with a straight edge. We will drill straight down to punch the hole in the center of our square. You will proceed to drill two holes on one edge and three holes on the opposite side. These split holes will connect to two of the two halves of our silicon mold. We'll then mark the center axis of our styrofoam block on all faces. Then proceed to find the center of the top of our foam by connecting those axis points. We'll drill as far as the drill can reach straight down into the foam. This may be difficult without a drill press, but try to keep the drill stable and straight. The neck of the Estes flask is very narrow, and any small shift of the drill could cause the flask neck to break, like mine did later on in this video. Now you're going to want to take four copies of the Estes flask template, and glue each of them to a side of the foam block. Make sure that you center your template along the central axis of the block with the mouth of the flask toward the hole drilled into the bottom of the foam. 
Make sure you spread an even coat of glue that covers the entire surface of the foam. Glue does not stick the styrofoam very well, and you don't want your template to fall off while carving. While the glue dries, we will cut our dowel rod into about five three centimeter pieces and one long piece for the center, however long that it fits within the hole you drilled into the foam. You're going to need a hacksaw as well as some clamps to hold the dowel steady. You'll want to mark each of your segments and cut them out. Now we have one long piece and five short pieces. We are not going to use these right now. You can set these aside for the beginning of step two. Instead, we will only glue in the long segment right in the center. So grab your glue and lather the entire rod making sure that the rod is sturdy. We'll have to wait for it to dry. Now that everything has dried and the templates are stuck to your foam, we can begin carving the center of our flask. Be sure to cut the very inside line as this will act as the mold of the hollow part of the flask. I will be using this box knife and start by cutting off the top. If you have the extra money to spend, there is a knife specifically designed to cut foam However, I find that the box knife works fine if you go slow. The idea for cutting with the box knife is to slide the knife so it cuts the foam rather than tearing it. You want to make small one centimeter cuts in the foam to act as your guidelines. I recommend starting with the corners as it is easier to angle the knife for a clean cut. Now that the top is off, we can throw that away and move to the outer rim. I will start with the body of the flask and save the neck and head for later since those will be the most fragile parts. Like before, you want small cuts around the perimeter to act as your guidelines. Then I will cut straight across to the base to remove the excess. You can then easily cut out those corners to get the nice rounded shape. 
will continue this process on all four faces. Then we will move on to the head and neck of the flask. This will be a bit trickier as the neck is very fragile. You want to be careful not to cut too deep. Like before, we will trace the lines with the knife to create a guideline, but then we will cut underneath the piece, flush with the side to lift the excess material up. I will then cut a triangle to get the neck of the flask and straight down to get the head. We will continue this process for all the faces of the flask. Now that we cut off all the extraneous pieces and we are left with only our inside template, we can actually begin carving our internal flask. We will start by cutting around the right side of each face to the axis. That is only half deep. It is very important that you do not cut off the template as you need it to guide your cuts on the next face. So only cut to the center axis. You can see that I'm cutting along the curve of the right side of the face. You want to use the right face to guide your knife. Try to keep the knife perpendicular to the cut so that you do not cut into the project. Remember that you can always cut things off, but you can't put them back on, so be careful and take it slow. Once you finish cutting the right side, swap to the left. Heads up tip, never put your hand in front of the knife, cut away from your body, or else you'll end up slipping and cutting yourself like I did. Knives are dangerous, use them at your own risk. I'm not responsible for you doing stupid things. You may think I'm crazy that I have to say this, but you would be surprised.
Once you've cut through both the right and left side on all faces, you can cut straight down to remove the body. Once those are off, you can cut the corners to get the proper curvature. Then move on to the head and neck. Again, this is a weak point, so be careful. If it breaks off, you're going to have some problems. The only thing to do now is to cut away the corners until it has a nice rounded shape. I recommend having an extra copy of the template to help guide you on what it's supposed to look like. You can see that I am cutting the corners in thin sheets to try and make the foam as smooth as possible. If you accidentally cut too deep or tear a chunk out, don't worry, we can fix it later. Be careful not to put too much pressure on your project, as the thin net could snap while you cut it to shape. Once everything looks good, we will move on to our lightweight spackle. We'll use this spackle to fill in the large gaps like this one and smooth out the shape to be round. I'm not sure which brand would be best for this project, but I would recommend any one that is easy to remove when it is dried. Now we will wait for it to dry and add the second and third layer to fill in all the holes and smooth out our sculpt. Now that everything is dry and you have added multiple layers to fill all the holes in the foam, 
we will give it a quick brush of the sandpaper to take off anything that sticks out. You can wrap the sandpaper around your finger to get a good sand around the neck of the bottle. Again, make sure everything is smooth. Now we'll begin gluing in those five pegs. Take your glue and just dab it around one of the ends of the small dowels. Then just stick it into the hole. We're going to repeat this for all five of our dowels. When you're finished, make sure all the pegs stick straight up. An uneven peg could screw up your silicone mold. For step two, we will sculpt the Estes flask to create our silicone mold. You will need a matte clear coat finish spray a large box of air dry clay, three boxes of silicon mold, a hot glue gun, five fiberglass plates, and of course our project so far. So we will start by coating the entire thing in clear spray. Make sure you shake it well, keep it at a distance, and spray an even coat. Be warned that spray paints of any kind will destroy foam, so make sure that you have coated your entire project with the spackle. This spray will act as a barrier to keep the clay from sticking to your foam. Now we will begin coating our project in clay. You may want a template to help guide you on how much clay to add. I have prepared a large block of clay from the air dry clay. Since it is air dry, it may dry out. You may need to add water to keep it moldable. So I will begin by flattening the clay to about a 2 centimeter thickness. You could probably use a rolling pin for this, but I don't own one, so hands work well for me. I decided to start with the head and neck of the flask so the thin neck would not snap under the weight of all the clay. Make sure it's a nice even layer all the way around and blend the ends together. Now for the body, I decided to use a patchwork strategy and cut sheets of clay to fit the empty spaces, kind of like a puzzle.
Make sure that you blend all the seams smooth and remove any air bubbles under the clay. You can then start to design your flask by shifting the clay around. This will be the final shape of your flask, so make sure that it has the design that you want. It may also be a good idea to flatten the bottom of your flask so it can stand on its own. Once it's the right shape, we can move on to the box. Once you're happy with how your flask looks, we can begin constructing our box. I will be using plexiglass sheets for the walls of my box and some scrap foam from an old project that will help prop up the flask. But you can use whatever you want to fill the extra space. Make sure that all the corners are 90 degrees. Then we can use the hot glue to stick the walls into place. Make sure that there is no gaps in the glue or else the silicone will leak. Now that our box is solid, we can begin laying out the base of the mold with clay. I will layer the base with sheets of clay up until the halfway point on the flask.
Once you have a nice even layer of clay, you will want to smooth it out with a flat edge or some water. I will then take this marble and begin pressing it into the clay to create these little divots. You want a bunch of these around your mold, as these will help the two halves of the mold stay together. You will also need to add a spout for where you plan to pour your resin. The best place to put this is near a flat surface like the bottom of our flask. I'm going to take a little bit of clay and sculpt it into a funnel like shape. Smooth it around the end, and our entire piece is ready for silicone. For my silicone mold, I will be using um, Umu 30. We have our glass bowl, a paper towel to catch the spills, and something to stir with. I heard that you could recycle your old molds by chopping them up and mixing them in with the new mold, However, this does not work, and actually weakens the mold. We'll start by unloading both containers. You'll have to do some math to figure out how much you need, and mine fell a little bit short. I thought I could get away with only one case, but I needed like another half. When you're stirring, make sure you scrape the edges of your bowl to get a thorough stir. Once everything is a nice mixed color, we can pour it into our mold. Now I knew I was going to end up short so I grabbed some extra foam blocks to fill up the space, but do not do this, make sure you have enough material for your mold. The foam ended up making the mold stiff and it ended up breaking my mold. Make sure you buy enough of your silicone to fill your entire mold. Scrape the bowl to get as much as you can, then I added the recycled mold. And finally tried to fill the space with the foam. Again, avoid this nonsense by buying the right amount of silicone for your mold. The foam kept floating out of the silicone, so I used weights to hold it down. Once again, buy the right amount of silicone so you don't have to worry about this. But otherwise, the silicone should be solid after two days and safe to remove. 
However, different products have different drying times. Now essentially, we are not removing the silicone, but instead removing the box. I will remove the plexiglass, and if you need to, you can use heat to soften the glue holding it together. Then we can flip it over and remove the clay base. However, you want to keep your flask in the mold. Do not remove it. You may notice that it is very dirty. You will use water and a brush to clean it off. The clay should rinse off easy with water. Just soak it, then pick it up with a paper towel. We'll also need more clay to complete our funnel. All you have to do is just make another half cylinder. All you have to do is just make another half cylinder structure and connect it to the flask. You don't want it to overhang, so make sure it's smooth and flush with your mold. With everything cleaned up, we can now reconstruct our box. This may be a little more difficult compared to the first one, as you want it as tight as possible around your pre-existing mold. Again, make sure there are no holes in your sides or else it will leak. Before we can move on to the silicone, we must block the holes along the edge. Because we have to reconstruct our box, there will be small gaps along the edge. You will want to use the clay to trace the entire perimeter to avoid the silicone leaking down. Trust me, this is very important. If it leaks, you won't be able to split your mold. There is also a special product called Mold Release that can help, but I forgot about it, so something to look into and I would recommend it because splitting the mold was pretty hard.
Now it's time for the silicone. Warning, another mistake I made was using a glass bowl to mix my silicone. Don't use glass. I thought it would be easy to peel off, but because of science, silicone and glass like to stick together, and cleaning this bowl was a pain. So don't use glass. Instead, use a bowl that you aren't afraid to throw away. <laughs> Same deal as before. We're going to mix one part blue to one part pink. Mix until purple. Pour it into the box. And panic fill it with foam because I'm too lazy to do the math required to figure out how much material I should have bought. Now, after two days, after it is solidified, we can pull them apart. I start by removing the extra clay, which gives me a head start on breaking open the mold. But as you may see, I'm struggling to pull it apart, because the foam and the recycled bits have made the mold very fragile. The mold tore in multiple spots that I could not repair. I used an X-Acto knife to cut away at those spots and avoid spreading the damage. Second problem rose when the foam was too stiff, and it ended up breaking the internal mold. This will be a problem later, but uh, through all the struggle, we now have two halves of our mold. This was not supposed to break. However, I can't quit now. I wish you luck on yours that yours does not break. What we're going to do now is begin peeling off all the clay. We do not need it anymore. Then we will grab our water and brush and clean off as much of the clay from the mold as possible. For step three, we'll begin casting our resin. You will need our three part mold, paper towels, one case of epoxy resin, silver dye, but I couldn't find any so I'm just using paint, opaque yellow dye, and transparent amber dye, 5 gram pack of thermochromic pigment, you will want the one that turns from green to yellow for the Estes flask, or if you don't want the color changing you can just use the yellow and amber dyes. You will need a lot of rubber bands, about four disposable cups, a spoon, and two stir sticks. You will also need three disposable bowls, and you may also need clamps for your mold if it leaks, but I got lucky and my mold was sealed tight. We're going to start by strapping just the bottom of the mold with rubber bands. By the way, I fixed my broken foam center by gluing it back into place. And while I forgot to show it, the foam core is inside the silicone. Be sure that you have that inside the mold before putting the rubber bands on.
Now we've worked with two part resin before. This definitely should not be your first resin project. We will mix equal parts resin and hardener. We will then pour resin into two separate cups. More than two thirds in one cup and less than one thirds in the other. Take the amber dye and give three drops to the big cup and stir. Then take the yellow dye and add one drop to the small cup and stir. Next we'll take the thermo powder and add a large amount to the small cup and a tiny bit to the big cup. Then of course mix it in. Add one drop of the silver to the small cup And after mixing them thoroughly, we will begin pouring it into our mold. This is the hardest part. I'm trying to add swirls in the resin to make it look like flames. However, it did not work for me. The resin mixed and became one color. I left a link in the video's description to a video that should help you get swirls. Now, as you fill your mold, apply more rubber bands, and if it leaks, you will want to bring out the clamps. You could save any extra resin in the freezer. After three days, the resin should harden, and you can remove the rubber bands. We can now crack open our mold and see our project. You can see that the heat from my hand turned it yellow. The swirls aren't visible, and it looks as if the foam core inner mold broke off and floated up, giving me these really thin walls. Regardless of the outcome, we will begin removing the foam, and hopefully you're lucky enough to end it here, but I will have to do a few repairs on mine.
Now I will begin to fix my project. It has very thin walls as seen here, so I did not remove the foam inside of it to avoid breaking it. I will recast it using one half of the mold. You will also need some sandpaper, a Dremel with a nice cutter bit, a long sturdy poking stick so you can jab at the foam, and any bent poking stick that can reach around the corners of the flask. To fix the thin walls, I will be covering it with more resin, using this mold. I have here extra resin that I stored in the freezer. The resin right now is a little frozen, but is not hardened. Resin hardens with heat, so the cold will slow it down. I will mix it to bring it back to a liquid, then stick it in the mold with the Estes flask squished in there. You can see here that it is liquid, and I can now stick the flask in it. Make sure the flask is in there good, or else it might float out. You may want to weigh it down or strap it. And we will have to wait three days for it to dry. Now you can see that it is hardened, covering all the weak spots. We'll remove this lip with the Dremel. So just very carefully buzz off all the extra. You can see that it is now flush with the flask. However, it still stands out. We will smooth it by sanding it flat starting with a thick 80 grit sandpaper then move to 150 grit then a 220 grit you can now wash it off polish it or give it an extra coat of resin to make it smooth Thanks for watching. I'm sorry that this video was long, late, and uh, messy. I had a lot of roadblocks in the way of making this project, but I think the final product was worth it. I left a few links in the description. One is a tutorial on two-part molds. The second one is a tutorial on how to make uh, swirls and resin. And the third one is the link to the website where I bought the thermochromatic pigment. Of course, you don't have to get the chromatic pigment. Uh, you can color your Estes flask with whatever dyes you want. But when I make something, I want to make it so that it works like that it is in the game. Now, a uh, final warning that I just figured out now 
is that I can't actually drink from this Estes flask. And that's because the resin I used is toxic. You're not supposed to drink from it. Um, I am sure that there exists a resin that you are allowed to use for, like, cups, plates, and, like, silverware of some sort. And if that resin exists, I would definitely recommend that resin, and not the one I was using. But I think that's it, so... Uh, like, comment, and subscribe uh, for more projects in the future. And I hope to see you all for the next one.